thanks so much for joining us for the third and final day of the Food and Wine Classic in Aspen. We're so glad you're here. Sunday mornings can be tough. It's usually the hearty ones that are out here, so thank you for that. We appreciate it. We'll be small and mighty this morning, I think. And um, it's Sunday, which means church for a lot of people. And I know food is religion for us, but this isn't in church. So have some fun, ask questions, be lively. It's all good. Um, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. We actually have one of my favorite dads with us today. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my dad, but it would be pretty sweet to have Jonathan Waxman as a dad, right? I mean, he's Obi-Wan. He's cooking food of the Jedi today. Like, that's a cool dad, you know? Not to mention that he's a James Beard Award winner. He has amazing restaurants in New York, San Francisco, Nashville, among others. He's mentored so many cooks over the years. I mean, the force is definitely with him. So please help me welcome Chef Jonathan Waxman. <laughs> Uh, good morning. Um, how's, how are you all feeling? <laughs> Happy Father's Day, everybody. Thank you. Happy Father's Day, everybody. <laughs> all right, I need someone to be my timer. You got a phone on you? Pull it out. I told her I only have 45 minutes. Rome was not built in a day. All right. So, what is this? How long does the chicken take to cook? How long? An hour? No. All right, let's go. So um, I grew up in a chicken farm in Sonoma. And um, my grandmother was the worst cook in the planet. <laughs> she killed chickens once, and then she killed them in the oven. <laughs> so uh, everyone wants to know how I do this in the restaurant. And this is what we're going to do today. Normally, I would say this and make stock out of it. but Forget about it. Um, so I took the backbone out, left the oysters in. Can you see the oysters, guys? And then take the chicken, fold the wings over the way it is. It's already done for us. Take the chicken, and then t on your tippy toes, and you use your pressure, you break the, break the breastbone, OK? Taking uh, a big knife. And can you see how my fingers are like this, OK? If you're squeamish, use the, use the, for use the uh, scissors, OK? So, Cut, cutting straight down, and then, again, up on your tippy toes, and down with your, and then you cut the chicken perfectly in half. All right? So, all the bones are inside. If you, isn't that perfect? So, to make this equal, what we have to take out is the breastbone on the other side, okay? This is a little trickier. So, holding the knife against my fingers this way, and you slice down till you get to the bone, Again, up on your tippy toes, and then back down with your elbow, down like this. And you remove this part, and this makes great stock or a little tidbit for your snack later on. So you have two halves, perfect halves here, OK? Wash your hands a million times with chicken, right? My KitchenAid towel. Um, salt, up high, you want to do a good amount of salt. I don't brine these. Everybody asks me, do you brine them? And I do not brine them. But I do give a good amount of salt on them now, and I smack it in like I really mean it. And then fresh pepper, and don't use that crap that you buy in the store. Richard. You want it fairly fine. For chicken steak, of course, chicken fine, OK? And a, a really good amount. Don't be shy with the pepper, OK? And then you do the other side. 
Again, salt up high. I'm using Malden salt. And then again, pepper. And then olive oil in the, in the pan. Just a little bit. Who's timing me? You got your, your phone ready? You stick the, the chicken into the pan, skin side down, get a little olive oil on it, and flip it over. Isn't that pretty? So in seven minutes, my dear. It's a cool pan, yes. Did I say that? I didn't say that. Did I really? That was a joke, guys. <laughs> Not laughing. Sunday morning. Um, anyway, anybody go to church this morning? Thank you. All right. So, three and a half pound chicken without the, without the backbone goes down to about three pounds. Cut in half, it's a pound and a half each, right? How long is it going to take to cook, guys? How many minutes per pound? Let's give it 15 minutes a pound. So it's 15 plus seven and a half. 22 and a half minutes. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, we're at the altitude, so the altitude's gonna affect it a little bit, but let's see if I'm right, okay? How hot? Well, that's another problem. <laughs> Who cooks at home? Everybody? Are you sure your oven's at 450 when it's at 450? It never is. So I always suggest people take a thermometer, keep it in the oven all the time. Because you go there, you set it to 325, and guess what? It's never 325. So you could actually have your gas company, if you have gas, or your stove manufacturer come and calibrate your oven. Because we have all this stinky chicken juice. Let's get rid of that stuff, right? I love being able to do that. Okay, so um, gnocchi. Uh, who makes gnocchi at home? Anybody? Anybody from Australia? How do you pronounce G N O C C H I? Oh, you're good. I did a TV show, an Australian TV show. The guy kept saying "knocky." I didn't knock on your door, buddy. So I've been. These are rusted potatoes that weigh approximately just under a pound. No, probably 12 ounces. They've been cooking in water with garlic and rosemary and salt for exactly one hour, okay? Now, normally what I would do is I would cool these rapidly, so why not do that today? Out of the pot, now, in the restaurant, we kind of let these cool, we let them relax and cool naturally. But since we're under a little time restraint today, we're going to let this just cool in some ice water. So if you're in a hurry, you can do that, okay? So while those are chilling out a little bit, for the, sal for the chicken, we're going to make a little salsa verde, okay? So for the salsa verde, we have... Beautiful herbs, okay? We have a mortar and pestle. We have capers. We have, are they in here? I like the way he's tapping it like something's gonna fall out. See that? <laughs> Richard, you jinxed yourself. So you could, you could buy anchovies two different ways, or three different ways. You could buy them packed in salt. You could buy them whole. You could buy them filet. Buy them in a tube. It's so much easier. <laughs> Guess what? The ones in the tube, you take it out, squirt it in, you're done. Right? So anchovies. Garlic, 
and capers, okay? So, garlic, um, if you're you're really unhappy about somebody, you do it like this. <laughs> right? Make sure the blade is pointing away from you, by the way, when you do this. <laughs> I didn't plan that, sorry. So you want to sort of semi-pulverize them a little bit ahead of time. You could do it in the mortar and pestle, from, from, the, from the whole piece, but it just, it's a pain in the butt. Oh, I fell over. Okay, how many minutes has it been? No, how many minutes has it been? Okay, what's the most important thing about the chicken? The chicken itself. Um, but besides that, What's this for? What'd you say? Say it out loud, please. Baste it. Baste it. That is the key to life. Okay? Okay, I want five minute timing on this one, okay? Five minutes remind me we're gonna baste again. Okay? Why do you baste, everybody? Anybody? What? Moist? Chicken's already moist. Crispy, yes. Okay, so start with crispy. So how do you make a chicken crispy? You baste it. So what happens is that chicken has a tremendous amount of subcutaneous fat, like I used to about four, week, four months ago. So I lost 35 pounds of my subcutaneous fat. But with a chicken, you see that beautiful fat on the surface? How do you get it to get the skin crispy? You baste it because you want to get the, skin, the fat to boil. So when you get that blistering effect, that's from basting. Okay, when you do it on your grill at home, everybody has the grill too high of a temperature and you always burn it, right? You, so with, if you have a Weber, this is the, so if you want to do this with a Weber, this is the greatest thing in the world. You take the chicken the way I did, butterfly it, cut the, cut the backbone out, salt and pepper it whole, and flatten it out. Get the Weber so it's kind of medium temperature, not too high, not too low. Adjust the spouts on the top so there's a little bit of air coming through the top and a little air coming from the bottom. Normal Weber, right? Put the chicken in skin side down and, 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 start, and, and don't be afraid. Skin side down, put the lid on it, and go have a cocktail. Don't touch that thing for 35 minutes. Don't even look at it. Don't even pretend to look at it. Trust me. So what, what will happen is that the chicken will cook 85% on the skin side and the skin will be beautifully blistered because what happens is the heat hits the skin and gets the fat boiling. And that's where the beauty of all that happens. Okay, so I've got uh, parsley, I've got basil, I've got all kinds of stuff here, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little olive oil in here, tiny bit. And to get the whole thing moving along, a good amount of salt, okay? All right? Now, come here, David. Come on. Come up here. So David's going to pulverize this as, as best he can, like he means it. While he's pulverizing it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be chopping some herbs, okay? And pulverize it, David, like you, really, like, you, like you really mean it, okay? There you go. And you really wanna get it till it's pulverized, okay? How you looking over there? Smash it. Think about a client that you really don't like. Oh, you don't, you like that client. You can find one you don't like. Like, really, Dave, up in the air. Up, there you go. Now start pounding it.
It's kind of obvious, right? But that's the whole thing I love. I love teaching people that don't know how to cook. How to cook. We all have to eat, right? At one point in your life, you're going to have to figure out how to do it. So I've got chives in here, parsley. I've got um, flat parsley and curly parsley. I'm just taking the basil like this, and I'm, I'm cheating. I'm shoving it together like, like, just like this. And watch how I do this. I form my hand, thumb behind my fingers, like a little crab, so I can move backwards and forwards like this, OK? So watch how my knife works. My knife is at an angle against my fingers like this, correct? You got it? And watch what I do. I can look at you and see what my left hand is doing. It's moving backwards, OK? See that? And what's happening? Um, Richard, come here. Hold my elbow. And No, the other one, the knife one. And push. So I'm not using my wrist, guys. I'm using my elbow. Everybody uses their wrist. That's why you never can cut things right. It's a full motion. The knife is, you want to use all eight inches of the knife, right? So the only way you can do that is to go through like this, OK? All right, so I've got this. David, let me see how you're doing. How many minutes have it been? Two more minutes, right? Five seconds. Five seconds, I love you. <laughs> Fold the towel up. Now, we're starting to get some action. Now, can you all see what's happening? You, you keep going, dude. Now, make sure you shake the pan so it doesn't stick, OK? Can you see the blistering is starting to happen? Now, at altitude, we're gonna give, I'm going to give us another five minutes. It'll be 27 minutes, probably, before this is done. And you don't want to leave this out of the oven too, too, too long because you don't want to lose your heat, right? OK? All right, David, you're looking good, dude. All right, so David, you stay there. Now, left hand if you're right-handed, the other way you're right-handed, and you want to shove your knife all, not up and down because that's going to smash the herbs. You want to cut all the way through. And you can watch TV when you're doing this. It's fine. All right, so red pepper flakes. Keep going. Looking good. Come over here, David. Isn't that beautiful? Looks beautiful, right? OK, now you stir. Stir. Keep it in there. Stir. Stirring. Stir, David. Keep stirring. Keep stirring. You, how, how's it look? Looks good. Looks good? Does it look like salsa verde? I need it. You need it, right? A little more olive oil? Should I keep stirring? Keep stirring. I do have children. Oh. I could tell you, I know. Um, all right, so these potatoes are cold now. I'm taking off the skin. I'm going to just do one potato today because it's, it's, otherwise we, we won't have enough time. But um, while I'm going to make gnocchi, I'm going to make the dish at the same time. Are you guys cool with that? So, David, keep going. Don't stop. Hey, David, do me a favor. Can you put some pepper in there for me? How much? Oh, as much as you like. You don't have to get the potato totally clean. Get rid of the skin. Unfortunately, the skin is the best part, but for this, ricer. Now, I have a saute pan here. which I'm going to turn on to medium heat. So while I'm making the gnocchi, I'm going to make the gnocchi, OK? So who makes gnocchi at home? Do you poach it? Do you cook it ahead of time in boiling water? 
So here's what happened. I was making a, a dinner party for my wife, and she said, babe, where's the gnocchi? I said, well, I know where it is. She says, you're going to serve it, right? I said, well, not exactly. It's in the freezer. <laughs> Frozen, yes? I just saw Penn and Teller in uh, Las Vegas a couple weeks ago. I, I don't know how they do it. Teller swallowed these needles. It looked like he swallowed. I mean, I was 10 feet from him. It was a private audience. I don't know how he did it. Anyway, a little bit of olive oil, some butter. They're frozen, yes? They're hard, right? David, how you doing over there? You're done, David. Okay, stay here. Don't move. See how beautiful and fluffy it comes when, when using this little machine? I love this machine. I'm stealing it. Is it KitchenAid? Is it KitchenAid? Is it KitchenAid? Absolutely. All right. See how beautiful the fl and fluffy they are? So what is the, 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 the worst part of doing any kind of cooking is creating something that is stiff and undelicious. A little bit of flour, make a little, make a little cavity here. Jen. David. You're beautiful. Put that back there. And David, do me a favor. Can you see that, um, that yellow bowl that's under the herbs? Can you leave it right there? Timing. Thank you. Yikes. I'm going to do it right here, guys, because it's... David, there's a spoon down there. Yeah. All right, guys, so it's... David, come over here. Are you witness this. Is it blistering? It's blistering, y'all. It's blistering. How many minutes total has it been? Anybody timing me? All right, so while this is... So to crack an egg, don't do this, what I just did. <laughs> Save it by scooping it up with your hands and letting the, the white. By the way, who makes egg white omelets? Anybody? Stupid. <laughs> Any cardiologists out there? Do you hear that noise? It's my wife standing behind me going, honey, when's the gnocchi me ready? <laughs> Frozen, right? You're going to love this. All right, David, you got an egg yolk in there, right? What? Yes. Yes? yes. Can you put some mustard in there for me? Sure. How much? Uh, put in here, David. Put in a heaping teaspoon, please. So gnocchi are here. So to make gnocchi, I love this tool, okay? So don't use your hands, because you don't, number one, I hate making a mess with my hands, getting all sticky, especially if I have to do it to cook at the same time. And you chop in the egg, okay? All right? Throw it right in there. What else are you going to put in there? Oh, well, let's put some lemon. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Now, lemon, you put over, through your fingers so the seeds go into your, the pips go into your fingers, not into the bowl, right? All right, David, what else are you going to put in here? Stuff? <laughs> Ingredients? Anchovy. Okay, David.
how beautiful they're starting to get brown, right? So put the, put the mixture together like this. Where did my potatoes go? Oy vey. Janet. Richard. I can't fire him. So I'm actually doing something else today, too. Everybody wants to know how I do my JW potatoes. I'm taking the same potatoes for the gnocchi, steamed, and we're going to fry them. OK, so you got some anchovy in here. Uh, can you put a little salt in there for me? How many minutes has it been for my chickens? How many minutes? 20 total. So what do we say? 27, right? Now here's the drill about the chicken. You got to let it rest after it comes out. Okay? So I'm chopping this up. The egg yolk, flour. You want some garlic in there? Yeah, I've been told. She wants some garlic. Yeah. Someone the boss wants garlic? The boss wants garlic. Okay, let's put some garlic in. Things at high temperature, it's really weird how they, it, it's bizarre. All right, remember that whole thing about smashing? Right in, like that. Got some extra herbs lying around, throw those in too. Why not? What else can you put in here? David? I'm going to put some tarragon in here. Well, that looks good. And some salt. And a little olive oil. Whip it like you mean it. Like you mean it. OK. So why are you holding the whisk like that? I don't know. You already that I don't cook. Like Show this, me. David, like this. This is your cooking demo. I'm learning. Shush, shush, shush. Just work. <laughs> okay, so look what's happening to my dough. And this really is dough, guys. So what, what, has, what, what happens here, you can put a little more flour on here, and you can form it up, and you start gently rolling it back and forth, okay? Be liberal with the flour. And then at one point, you cut it in half and just roll it back and forth, OK? Fingers like this, not like this, not like this. But why do you use the bottom of your hands? Because you have more control. Use your fingertips. See how beautifully it's starting to brown? Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, now whip it like you mean it, David. Go. Go. Hard. Harder. Thank you. I knew you could do it. Harder. Harder. Jen, this is mayo for you, babe. Yeah, it's good for her. Go, 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 go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. OK, look at, that. look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Stop. You're done. That's beautiful. Thank you, David. All right, how many minutes has it been? What did I say, 27? Let's say 30. All right. So, gnocchi. I've got all these beautiful herbs. Okay? At this juncture, they're really kind of beautifully brown, right? So, we have Dungeness crab. Anybody from San Francisco? Washington? Portland? You guys know what this is. Hmm. So, not really tomato season yet, but we're going to pretend that it is.
tomatoes? Cut them on the equator or, or down through the poles? Equator. Oh, I'll do, I'll, do the, I'll do the poles. I'll show you why I don't like the poles, because then it has that little thing in the middle there. But I'll go along with you guys. I don't care. I'm easy, somebody told me once. All right, now they're beautifully brown, right? I'm going to add all the Dungeness crab right in with the gnocchi. Trusty fork. Isn't that beautiful? And then we're going to add some tomato. I, I'm putting like about a half cup in for all this stuff. And in about four minutes, I want to take, we're going to look at that chicken and see if it's done. Now, butter. Little pieces of butter, about three of them. One, two, three. Some pepper and parsley. I can't even see what this is. Little sage chives, whatever the hell this is, tarragon. Pellegrino. Pellegrino makes the best sauce. True. Up in the air. What do you think? It looks pretty good, right? This guy. All right, so that's cooking a little bit. We got the anchovy dressing ready to go. Now, the last, last part of the puzzle. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish this part. Keep rolling, 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 keep rolling. Isn't that beautiful? And then at one point, you go like this. Yucky. All right, enough of that nonsense. Now you know how to make, isn't that beautiful? Now you don't have to put egg yolk in if you, if you don't like the egg yolk part. Um, I have a whole issue about eggs, but I'm not gonna get into it now. My psychiatrist will deal with that later. Chicken side, we're ready for the chicken. Ah, okay, so the potatoes are cooking. Can you see, oh guys, what's going on here? All that blistering that's happening, but guess what, we have about four more minutes to go. Now how do you test if the chicken is done or not? You take a probe like this and stick it in the deepest part of the chicken, like this, and hold it for about 45 seconds. And afterwards, you touch it to the bottom of your lip. So it's right now at about 135. What temperature do we want? 155. Now, why do you want 155? Because the interior is 155, guess what the exterior is going to be? 190. So when you take it out, the resting period pulls all the juices to the same temperature. And who said juicy before? Somebody back there. How do you keep the chicken juicy? You let it rest. Okay, so the gnocchi is just about done. Wow, looks good. Don't ever put cheese on your gnocchi with seafood. What the hell? I hate rules. Always my way, sadly. Toss it again. Always taste, right? Hmm. All right. 
Here's your gnocchi. So while the chicken's going to cook a little bit longer, let's make some kale salad. So what are the, what's the best thing in the world you can possibly eat? What's the best thing for you? One, there's one thing. Anybody? Raise your hand. Who knows? Yes, sir. No. Next. Yes, sir. Yes. What? Okay, I'll tell you what. If you look it up, you Google, you all can do it right now anyway. The most healthy thing you could possibly ever eat is collard greens. Collard greens have the most nutrition, nutritious minerals, um, fiber, um, all the things you need to have longevity in your life. Now the problem with collard greens is everybody cooks them to death and cooks all the good ingredients out of them. So the absolute best way to use collard greens, and second, by the way, is kale. Fava beans, by the way, are the greatest source of protein this time of year. And you want to cut the kale so it's about a quarter of an inch thick. And this is a hard thing to do. So at home, use one leaf instead of a bunch like I'm doing. Okay. Now, I'm in a hurry, so I'm going to do all this at once. Don't try this at home, because you're going to cut yourself. But if you want to try this at home, you squeeze it like this. And remember that little crab action with my hand? I'm holding the whole head of kale as I'm cutting down through it. And it's a brisk cut all the way through. You want to pretend that you're cutting down through to the cutting board, okay? Or through the cutting board as you do this, okay? Isn't that beautiful? So we got David's gorgeous dressing here. David, throw the gloat away, dude. Put it all in the dressing like this. So if you're really angry at somebody, this is a good exercise. If you're angry at the world, you don't like the way politics are going, like any of us, you get your hands inside and you just massage the crap out of this. Why am I doing this? Any ideas? What's, one at a time. Yes, ma'am. No. Yes. No. Yes. Okay, so here's the drill. When I'm massaging the kale, I'm actually releasing an acid inside the kale that's forming a catalyst with my sauce, okay? And as I'm going along here, what's happening is the catalyst that I'm getting out of the kale right now is tenderizing the kale as we go. And I'm getting my anger out at the same time. Do this as long as you want to. The longer, the do, do this, the longer you do it, the better, you, the better it's going to be. Because if it's too raw, it's not that delicious, to be honest with you. Now, I let this stay in the bowl. For, you can leave it overnight. Not too much longer than that, because then it starts to do weird things, like cook and get weird. And um, thank you, Richard. And chickens should be about done. Oh, to wash your hands, I use half a lemon. Why not? It's there. Might as well use it. OK. So kale's done. Okay.
pecorino cheese on top. Who invented the microplane? What a, what a genius. Hope they got a nickel for everyone that got sold. Little pecorino on top. So your kale salad is done. Potatoes are taking a while. Thank you, Richard. All right. Now, there's a weird thing that happens with the chicken when I know, I know it's done. There's a couple of indications. So, one is the temperature. Two is that they're actually, the legs are boiling. You can see that they're pumping. It's, it's, now it's all the right temperature. I still baste when it comes out, and, and to make it easy to baste it, just flip it over. Baste it like that. And I said, let it rest, right? Don't go away. OK, chicken. Aren't they beautiful? Now, I said 45 minutes, right? How many minutes has it been? Here's the weird thing about chefs. We all have a weird inner timer. I don't know where it comes from. Like when I do TV shows and they say you have seven minutes, I don't think about the seven minutes. It registers in my brain that I need seven minutes. I've never figured that part out, but I, I did have a theory about that once, that um, there's a little thing that happens. Anybody perform on stage out there? So when you're on stage, you go into your little bubble. The audience doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what you're doing. And I think that little inner bubble, that weird little um, that weird little mechanism inside your brain tells you what, what you need to do to get ready in time and finish on time. So my potatoes, sadly, are well, actually, they're looking pretty good. Starting to be nice and brown. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? If you have a leftover baked potato, you can do it the same way. Just crumble it up. There's nothing better than a baked potato. Or double, double baked potato. When you take the innards out, chop it up, Put butter, cream, bacon, chives, garlic. Put it, bake it again, and then put caviar on top. OK, how to cut the chicken up, guys. Now, I should have let this rest, but the guy with the paddle over there is giving me a hard time. Joe, I'm sorry. So how do I know where the joint is? Perfectly right here, OK? Cut the breast in half. Use your trusty fork to hold the chicken in place. Put this on here. You see how beautiful and moist that is? Kind of perfect, right? It wasn't that hard, was it? Chicken. Now, you can cut this up in more pieces. You can cut this up into three, if you like. You have a lot of people coming over. My wife always said, how do you cook, make one chicken feed 12 people? Cut it small. <laughs> always take, wow, that's good. Got our potatoes. No, I don't use crack in my potatoes. Somebody accused me of that once. 
Say, well, your potatoes taste like they're just cracking them. Nope. Pecorino. David Salsa Verde. salt on our potatoes, right on top here, a little pecorino on top, chicken with salsa verde and potatoes. <laughs> Any questions, guys? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Amazon. Yes, what else? Yes, ma'am. You know, what is canola oil? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody know what canola oil is? No, what is it? Soy oil. Now, I prefer peanut oil, but there's peanut allergies these days, so you have to be careful. So instead of canola, I, I really prefer corn oil. But it's interesting, um, I'm using a lot of avocado oil these days. Guess why? Highest burning point of any oil. And it's good for you. Yes, sir. What's that? He's always available, trust me. <laughs> yeah, sure, you can do anything you want. <laughs> yes, sir. 375. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, ideally, in a warm spot for exactly 30 minutes. Covered. But not totally covered, because you don't want it to steam. Okay, so that's the trick. Then when you, on, then you actually put it back in the oven for five minutes to reheat it, to get, the, to get, the, get, that, get it, that back to temperature. Okay, other questions? Listen, have a great Father's Day. Thank you all so much.